paying for everything today. I can't believe he just paid with his hand. <laughs> like you just literally put your hand up I, and you're good to go. Like that's crazy. And that's right. So, Lindsay, just outside of the studio here, we've got a few of these vending machines. Now, we all know how these work, right? You walk up, you put your dollar in, you get your pack of chips. Well, as I learned today, these machines are quickly becoming very old-fashioned. And, in fact, just how old-fashioned may surprise you. At Three Square Market in River Falls, a team of programmers designed software for break room markets, like this one. Believe it or not, this is the reason they're about to do this to more than 50 of their employees. It's the next thing that's inevitably going to happen and we want to be a part of it. The concept is pretty simple. Just like how you can buy something nowadays using your phone, what if you could use a microchip inside your hand instead? Todd, you're going to show us how this could potentially work. Yes, uh, basically what this is considered is a break room market in an office complex. We'll come up, scan the item, we'll hit pay with credit card, and it's asking to uh, swipe my proximity payment now. I'll hold my hand up, just like the cell phone, and uh, it will pay for my product. Instead of a credit card, Correct, hand. because my microchip is now my credit card. More than 50 Three Square Market employees are having them implanted starting next week. Not only can they buy stuff with them, they'll also be able to use the chips to get in the front door and log on to their computers. Each chip costs $300. The company's picking up the tab. The chip goes between your thumb and forefinger, and CEO Todd Westby says the data is both encrypted and secure. So if I'm one of your employees and I've got this chip in my hand, you won't know, hey, Josh is slacking off, I can tell because I'm reading this chip? No, there's no GPS tracking at all. Employees here aren't required to get the chip. One of the ones choosing to do so, however, just so happens to be former North Star player and current Edina hockey coach, Kurt Giles. If somebody told you back in the day when you're flying around the ice playing for the North Stars that you're going to have a chip implanted in your hand, you're going to use it to pay for stuff, you're going to use it to get in and out of buildings, what would you have told that person? I probably would have thought a chip tooth or a chip of ice, but not a chip that has the technology that we're talking about today. Okay, now. <laughs> In case you're wondering, Lindsay, each one of these chips, it's about the size of a single it's grain tiny. of rice. It's tiny, just one little grain of rice. And now, get this, if you get one of these implanted into your hand and you want to get rid of it, you know how you do that? For real? They tell me you just pop it out. It's almost hard to believe. Did they offer you one? Uh, they did. They very much wanted me to come back next week when they're putting them in employees yeah. and get one. Still not sold, but I'm a little closer to being sold Get that than I bag was when of I walked in. Faster from the vending machine. Sure would. All right, now we need to upgrade the vending machines. Yeah, yeah. really. All right, I thank know. you, Josh. Sure. All right, this may be the first time a U.S. company is using the technology, but it's already being used in Europe. A company in Sweden offered more than 100 employees the opportunity to get those microchips earlier this year. The company Epicenter Stockholm says phone and internet browsing history poses more of a threat than the chip. That this is a mark of the beast. Simple. Triple six, which is six 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 that's me that means mark of the beast, as Bible says in the Revelation. We will go a little deeper in that extra. Guess what? I'm gonna tell you the same thing. Yes, it is the mark of the beast. But in this time I'm gonna give you a little further information with the depth information why it is the mark of the beast. Something different. We understand the microchip has been released and uh, as soon as it's released in US and become really famous and everyone talking about it, yes, of course. The thing is, as soon as I heard this message, I, I started to do some research. Research in a sense where this microchip coming from and who produced it, who manufactured it. And I come to understanding that it was manufactured by the company called Biohex. Biohex. And we will come to that a little deeper later too. But when you go to that company website and it's, it's called Biohacks International, it's a company, it's based in Sweden, okay? And uh, including the logos uh, means something. They, out of nowhere, 
they have named this microchip the NFC tag N tag 216216 what that to do with this what I'm trying to say simply let's cut it quicker 216 think about it 6 times 6 36 36 times 6 216 oh coincident eh do you think that's coincident no as a mark of the beast they try to tell us hey this is the mark of the beast Revelation 13 18 here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the numbers number of the beast for the number is that of a man and his number is 666 there's few things I like to point out here that first the first company, the US based company, the name itself, many people can say it's coincidence, but think about it. The first company is tag, it's called Wisconsin. Wis, if I break it into three things, Wis, wisdom, con, also, that's another meaning I like to tell you, and sin, of course, sin, Wisconsin. And also, before I go to the detail, detailized information, whoever produced this, they are also the manufacturer of these products is called Foxconn. Why these people are trying to bring that con, C-O-N information? Let me tell you also another thing. Why this bio out of nowhere, the bio world came out also? Also, you can, it's, it's American standard text, which is, can be converted into a computer language. We also call hex mode. I don't want to go deep into that. But when you convert this word, C-O-N, okay, you can do it by yourself later. And convert this, you can see the hex mode is 636F6C, which is 666. It's not a coincidence, the game. And let's say I'm going to put a word bio b i o simple right convert that to hex mode 62 69 6f which is 666 is it consequential i don't think so so bio con everything that in a hex conversion says triple six and here they publicly they're challenging they're telling you people that this biochip score NTAC 216 which is triple six what else do you want to know what else you want me to prove to you it's in your face it's in in front of you simply they're mocking you people they're simply they're mocking they know what's about to come Christians are crying out loud they're saying hey this is the mark of the beast still people don't want to believe it and many people will take it as a joke <laughs> think about it people this is not a joke. They specifically chose the name Tag 216, N Tag 216. They could have come up with some other random names. Why did they? Why in this world they came with this number 216? And Biohacks, the company name itself, obviously triple six Bio S Cons triple six. All this leads into one path, which is a path to hell, which is triple six. God has warned us. Like 2,000 years ago, I used to think, hey, this could be, you know, coincident. I, even though I believe into this system, there might be a different change in future, more updates. But this is a time it's become official, and this is a time they officially chose those name tag, name and the number. And also, you have a capability to, to embed uh, Bitcoin or crypt cryptocurrencies information into this tech. At Qualcomm's third annual Snapdragon Tech Summit in Hawaii, the tech company announced the launch of its next generation chipset, the Dragon, uh, Snapdragon pardon me, 855. This chipset would power the first wave of 5G ready smartphones in 2019. Now, while 5G will become a reality in parts of North America, Europe, China, Japan, Australia, Southeast Asia, as well as South Korea earlier next year, India will continue playing catch up with the rest of the world. CNBC TV 18's Mega Vishwanath caught up with Christian Oman, the president of uh, Qualcomm, to find out what's next in the world of smartphones. And as India preps for 5G, what are the lessons we can learn from developed countries? Listen in.
Christiana, thank you so much for being with us on CNBC TV 18. Now, last year, we caught up with you uh, right here at the summit. And at that time, Qualcomm had completed a decade uh, with the Snapdragon. It's the beginning of the next decade. Why don't you tell us uh, what is the big highlight for the next decade? Absolutely. So, uh, very happy to be here. Good to see you again. Uh, this has been a very special show for us. I think first because of 5G. And I think one of the key messages 5G is here. Uh, we had key partners such as AT&T and Verizon using the Qualcomm event to make an announcement of a smartphone with Samsung by the first half of 2019. And I, I I, we take a lot of pride of all of this work within an 18 to accelerate 5G. And the second part is the announcement on the Snapdragon 855. And what it makes it so special, beyond being our you know, flagship Snapdragon 800 annual announcement, mm -hmm. is that it's going to be the processor in the first 5G smartphones that people will be able to buy just a few months away. Right. Who do you think would be the early adopter of this next gen of connectivity? Would it be the enterprise space or would it be consumers? It will start with consumers. And then a lot of the activity right now is to get smartphones you know, ready for a 5G upgrade cycle. Consumers will be able to experience first a 5G smartphone. But enterprise is one of the biggest piece of this transition because 5G will transform the enterprise. And much like Wi-Fi, it's very likely you have a 5G connected enterprise. And not only the phones in the enterprise, but all of the other devices will be connected to 5G. And that's going to be a big transformation. What would Snapdragon 855 powered smartphones mean for consumers in 2019? Very good question. So, uh, of course, I'm very excited about 5G and the 5G use cases. But when we think about 855, uh, in addition of 5G, there are two uh, very important uh, you know, capabilities that users will be able to experience. Mm -hmm. One, we announced the Snapdragon Elite Gaming. Yeah. And uh, around the globe, everybody's playing Fortnite on their mobile phones. And, and they're playing PUBG and all the other games. And uh, clearly now the industry understands, especially the gaming industry, that mobile is going to be the future of gaming. Mm -hmm. And Snapdragon A55, it's we, with the Snapdragon Elite Gaming, it's a platform designed to provide a great gaming experience for mainstream games. The second one is artificial intelligence and machine learning. It is one of the largest improvements we made to date in the capability to apply machine learning for many of the functionalities you have on a smartphone. And what would that do? We'll do application developers the ability to build in machine learning in each one of the different apps that we use on our smartphones. Right. Now, Cristiano, I caught up with you exactly one year back when you claimed that 5G will see an accelerated growth and will become a reality in 2019. Cut to the 2018 summit and you guys have hit that milestone. You have listed many, many regions like North America, South Korea, Australia, Europe. Uh, these are all regions that will experience 5G in the early part of 2019. So then let me ask you, uh, what has this one year been for Qualcomm like? It's been a very busy year in 2018. And I think we're very you know, proud of you know, the accomplishments of our team, many of our partners, which has been a race to get 5G ready. And I think really what we're seeing, unlike the other generations of wireless, we see United States, we see Europe, we see China, we see Japan, Korea, all moving at the same time. A lot of the developed economies really getting ready to launch devices in the first half 19. And basically what they're doing is building infrastructure, yes. uh, maturing the technology and we're doing interoperability with all of the different infrastructure vendors. We've been in every single trial and field trial and live calls of all of the operators and all getting ready so consumers can buy a phone, you know, before uh, summer of 2019. Now, as an Indian journalist, it is my duty to ask you that when do you think 5G will become a reality in India? Are we still sticking to 2020? Is that still the magic number? For sure, 2020. My word, you guys are going to think this story is crazy. Or maybe I'm late to the game and you've already heard about it, but honestly, I haven't. I did a little bit of searching and haven't seen a whole bunch of people covering this, but check this out. This is a tip from my friend Ada. She sent me this. Sponsored by the Grand Lodge Freemasons of Missouri. It's called the Mo Chip child identification program so you're already going to see where this one is going 
They have a website, which you can check out by yourself. It is in the YouTube description box if you want to check the link. It is mochip.org. But basically, if you go to the What We Do section, it says that although this is called MoChip, microchips are not used in this program. I think it should have the caveat saying, yet. But what it does is they collect digital photographs, digital fingerprints, child information and emergency contacts, more biometric data, which is dental bite impressions, and two laminated cards. This all goes onto a CD. It's presented to the parents. If your child is either lost or stolen, you provide this CD to law enforcement, gives them all the data they need, and also integrates with the Amber Alert system. So it sounds really good. The program is provided free of charge to every Missouri family who participates. Really interesting things about this program is it's been around since 2006. Check out the numbers of children that have gone through this identification program. It is anywhere from 10 to 25,000 children. On their main page, if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see their statistics. In Missouri alone, there's been over 1,500 of these events held and 240,000 plus kids identified. That is a lot absolutely stunning and again this has gone on since 2006 but what I find interesting is although this program dates back over 12 years ago if you just do a mo chip search you'll see that a majority of the articles from local and regional news agencies are talking about it today check out this one June 13th 2018 that one's a little bit older in 2017 this one three days ago six days ago if we go on through the pages you'll see that the majority of these Google search results are local news agencies within the last one to three months talking about the benefit of this mo chip program chip if I don't know if I said it before but it stands for child identification program but just so interesting that they chose the word chip even had to clarify on their main website that chips are not actually inserted into the children in this program again quote unquote yet but I wanted to do a little bit more digging so check out this uh, well, I did try to find a little bit of this on YouTube there was this youtuber who did it on March 12 2017 but only 209 views so again I haven't seen a whole lot of YouTube videos on this so this might come as a shocker to you. It is to me. It's actually in Wikipedia, the Masonic Child Identification Program. So this isn't just limited to Missouri. This is sponsored by the Freemason Grand Lodges of the entire North American states. So you can see here the CHIP program, conveniently named again, contains fingerprint card, physical description, video, computer disc, DVD of the child, dental imprint, imprint and the Missouri one didn't have this, but also a DNA sample. This is across all 50 states, sponsored by your friendly next door neighbor, Freemason. Check out some of these states. I didn't go through all the states, but it's definitely there. The Michigan Child Identification Program, sponsored by the Freemasons. Here's this one, the most worshipful, worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Florida child identification program next state maryland the grand lodge of maryland the maryland masonic child identification program found this interesting as well from the huffington post in 2012 september 26th conspiracy theorists need to theorize no more in pages from a fiction novel brought to life the strangest twists in popular folklore have been winding through our government corridors in this case, I wouldn't blame you for being tempted to run it by Snopes. It is a real thing. They go into how you may know this as Masoni Chip. And as we've seen, it's called Mo Chip. And who knows, it's probably called some other names, again, with the word Chip in all the other states. But what is it, you ask? It begins on the surface as a child ID project in case your loved ones are ever hor horrendously abducted. Parents are familiar with the at-home kits to record their kids' vital information for protection against the grace of all fears on a family. Normally, height, weight, hair, and eye color are recorded along with a set of fingerprints and hopefully a current photograph. It's just the good folks at your local Masonic Lodge saw fit to take things 
further with the advances in technology they began to offer digital fingerprints digital imaging digital video dental impressions and dna mouth swabs chip program now i think i might just add a couple personal words about the mark of the beast since you all know that's where this is headed i personally do not believe that the chip in the hand by itself is the mark of the beast my belief 100 percent is that the mark of the beast which is an irreparable sin that will condemn you to hell that is going to be uniquely tied to your complete loss of faith and worship of the antichrist and the beast system the mark of the beast is inherently tied to worship so my thoughts on the wor uh, the mark of the beast is these people will primarily be worshiping the Antichrist and the beast system. Secondarily, a lot of these other things may come to fruition. If you are worshiping the beast system, you may end up getting a mark on your hand in the form of a chip. You may also worship on Sunday. There's a whole bunch of things that people are saying are the mark of the beast, but personally, I think that they are secondary to the primary loss of faith which is worship of the antichrist and the beast system that that is definitely biblical and again i think it's primary i think a lot of these things come after that but uh yeah you can <laughs> huffington post says it best conspiracy theorists need to theorize no more we were right we were right the whole